Hey everybody, Danette here from the Amberlight Collective coming to you today with a tutorial on retouching in Lightroom. And when we talk about retouching in Lightroom, we really want to talk about it in the lighter sense of the word, meaning that if you have an image that requires heavy retouching, it's still better left to be edited in Photoshop. But if you're like me and you do a lot of portrait sessions that only require light retouching, meaning maybe skin, remo or skin removal, only if you're a cannibal, uh, but if you have any blemish removal, or skin softening that needs to happen, then Lightroom is the perfect tool for you and it will help you to retouch much more efficiently um, than maybe Photoshop would. So let's dive right in. Uh, I have a photo here that I've chosen from a portrait session I did about a year ago. Um, it's a great, great example of something that, that might need a little bit of blemish removal and skin softening. So what we're gonna be doing with it today is we're gonna be actually uh, just focusing on the local adjustment tools here today. Uh, I've already done as you can see here from my adjustments I've already done all of the color correcting that I want to do and now we're gonna dive into the re retouch and I really recommend color correcting your image first before doing the retouch which may seem a little counterintuitive but the reason behind that is if you've already made a retouch and then color corrected the correction that you've done on the overall photo might actually bring out imperfections that you didn't see before. So it's a really good best practice to color correct first and then dive into the retouch. So I'm going to show you a little bit of before and after from this uh, color correction. So you can see actually on the left what the image started as, what it's uh, been brought to up until now, and then we're going to dive in with a little bit of uh, blemish removal and retouch. So the first tool that we're going to be working with today is the local adjustment brush which you're going to find on the very right side of all of the local adjustment tools um, right above your basic panel. Um, and you're probably used to the basic panel. If you've never utilized any of the local adjustment brushes, then, then you've only been using the, the overall sliders that color correct and adjust your overall photo. You're used to um, taking the sliders, adjusting them, and seeing the adjustment being done on your overall photo. Um, and so that's what you're probably used to. With the local adjustment tools, it's not like that. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and open up the local adjustment brush and you're gonna see that the sliders on the local adjustment brush look very similar to what you'll find in the basic panel. However, if I go and I slide this uh, exposure slider just like I did a moment ago, you don't see any adjustments being made and that's because we haven't actually painted onto the photo with our local adjustment brush. Um, all right, so when I mouse over the image, you'll see that my cursor has turned into um, a brush. It looks very similar to maybe uh, the brush that you see in Photoshop or even the healing tool that you see in Photoshop. Um, so that might look pretty similar if you're used to doing your adjustments in Photoshop. You'll see that there are two uh, circles, the inner circle representing the brushes um, hardness and the outer circle representing the, f the feathering. You can feather a brush in Lightroom just like you can in Photoshop by holding down shift and then using the left and right bracket keys to adjust your brush. The closer the outer ring gets to the inner ring, the harder the brush is. So I'm actually going to go with a pretty soft brush uh, and I'm going to size it down just a little bit. Um, and then we're gonna use our clarity slider. I'm gonna hop out really quick of our local adjustment brush. If you've ever used the clarity slider in the past under your basic panel, then you'll notice that when you bring it over to the left, it gives your image a very dated, diffused, soft look. And it's not something that's very popular. So um, if you've never utilized the clarity tool within the local adjustment brush, you may be a little scared too, but don't be. It's actually very handy with skin softening. So I'm gonna bring it down to about, I don't know, 75 to start to see where we're at. And I'm gonna just go ahead and start painting onto my subject's skin. And you're gonna notice after I did that, that it's a very subtle change. And what you'll see is you'll see the spot where I started drawing, you'll see a little marker appear. And if you mouse over it like so, you'll see an overlay appear. It's just showing me where I have drawn. If you actually hit the O button on your keyboard, that overlay will stay up and it's a really, really good um, reference point for where you've already drawn. So I'm gonna continue to draw here real quick.
All right. The one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to go over any lines that are meant to be super defined. Remember with the clarity slider, when you slide it to the left, it's um, decreasing clarity, and we don't want that clarity to um, be decreased in things like um, eyes or the nostrils or lips or anything like that. So really, really steer clear of any lines that you want to remain prominent, okay? All right, let's go ahead and hit the O key again to take off our overlay. And then with the marker still selected, we want to take our clarity slider and let's go ahead and slide it both directions just to see the difference that it makes. So if I go 100% to the right, it gives the skin a much harsher feel. If I go 100% to the left, it gives it a very, very soft, almost plastic look. So we want to find something that that is right in the middle. Of course, we don't want to enhance too much because we don't want it to look fake and for guys I like to go a little bit less than I would normally go with girls so right about there looks great um, and I can kind of turn it off and you can kind of see I can turn the effect off and you can kind of see the before and after which is very subtle and that's what we're going for awesome all right we're gonna come back and revisit the local adjustment brush in a few minutes but next we're gonna head over to the spot removal tool you might have used the spot removal tool in the past there are a couple awesome features that you might not know about, and so I'm going to show you them now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit onto my subject's face. I'm going to select the spot removal tool, and you can feather the spot removal tool just like you can a local adjustment brush. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, and I'm going to use my left and right brackets to really soften up that spot removal tool, um, and I'm going to just start tapping on my photo where I would like um, to remove spots. So really similar to um, Lightroom. I'm sorry, Photoshop. I'm gonna go down here, tap it here. Now something you might not know about is, um, and this is a great example of something we'll talk about in a sec. Uh, something you might not know about is you can actually also not, not just tap on one spot, but you can actually tap and drag across an image and Lightroom will adjust it just like Photoshop does with the healing brush. So a lot of really cool options. Now, what Lightroom is doing is it's, it's looking at your selection that you've um, specified, and it's trying to find similar pixels. So sometimes it'll um, try to heal with spots um, that maybe don't make as much sense. So you can m actually drag and move the spot removal um, selection that it's chosen um, as well. Now, what I actually like to do is I like to hide my reference points um, because if I wanna go back over a, a spot, I can't when the reference points are shown. So I'm gonna hit the H button or hide. That's gonna take away my reference points and I'm able to just kind of draw and remove all the blemishes that I'd like. Something else that's really cool is if you've got a very diffused image like I have here, uh, you can use this Visualize Spots tool. And if we select that, what's going to happen is it's going to kind of invert the image and it's going to really show you where um, any imper imperfections that the program finds on there. Um, and you can actually use this slider to make it uh, more intense or you can kind of dial it down a little bit. So you can also use the spot removal tool this way to remove anything that might not be super noticeable to your eye. You'll notice the more that I use a spot removal tool, the laggier the program's going to become. So that's when it comes to play that you want to be um, very light-handed when it comes to retouching. So um, there's still some stuff that I would probably retouch on there. Maybe down here, grab these real quick and then we'll move on. All right, so the next thing I want to do, the skin's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and give it a before and after. So already in a good place. Next thing I want to adjust is going to be the eyes. We're going to go back to the local adjustment brush. And instead of um, having the clarity down, we're actually going to bring the clarity up just about to 25. We're going to bring the exposure up to about 20, and then we're going to bring the sharpness up to about ooh, 55 or so. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw 
in the eye. We're not going to actually draw on the pupil and we're going to try to avoid the um, outer ring of the eye as best as we can. And if I hit the O key, I can see exactly where I've drawn with the overlay. Looks okay. And then we're going to just, again, with our marker point selected, we're going to adjust the exposure. We're going to bring up the eyes. Because that's where all the connection is right now. The lighter the person's eye is naturally, the less you want to adjust it here. We don't want it to look like Cyclops eyes. So I'll zoom out. That's looking okay. It's still looking pretty good. Um, we're going to reselect the local adjustment brush. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring the clarity and the sharpness back down to zero. Going to bring the exposure up to 30 and the saturation down. And then we're going to take out some of the color and the whites of his eyes make his eyes pop a little bit more. You really want to be careful with this because you don't want it to look unnatural. Less is more with the eyes for sure. Okay, let's back out and see how that looks. That's looking pretty good. So there you have it. You've got a really, really simple and quick retouching method within Lightroom using the local adjustment tools. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. I might go in and adjust it a little bit more. Um, but like I said, you can be as thorough as you want to be with it. Um, and hopefully it will help you to be much more efficient and cut down the time that you spend behind the computer so that you can uh, be spending more time behind the camera. So thanks so much for watching, you guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you again next week.